So over in Lockpickers United, I think it's fairly well known that I don't like picking the Asus 600 with gins. So of course, uh, Georgia Jim and his box included an Asus 600 with gins. So in any case, let's uh, go ahead and try to pick this. It has, um, let me think, it has six pins. They are all gins and there is counter milling in the plug, I believe on every chamber uh, that interacts with those gins. So I have a piece of music wire here for tension. I'll be introducing a second one once we get into a false set. To, sorry about that, I bumped the camera. To go ahead and pick those um, those uh, gins out of the counter milling. So first we're just gonna look for binders. I have a hook seven, I think this is 18 or 19 thousandths from Peterson. Uh, start at the back. So six is loose, five binding. We'll go ahead and lift that up some. Loose, four. And this is just kind of, you know, pushing the binders. Um, and try to drop into that false set. I might have ever set four there actually already. Um, the, the lock is, uh, oh, I think three. The lock is a little, okay, there we go, false set already. The lock is a little mm, clicky, clickier, kind of uh, rough getting into uh, the false set. The pins have to move very far, kind of skip along the way up. Not, you know, I put some lube in there, but it only helped a little bit. So I have a second uh, tensioner here, and this is so I can control the tension back and forth like that, called float picking. Uh, the goal is to move the gins slightly out of the warding without dropping everything so that they can be lifted up. So I'll start at the front. I switched to from the seven to this number five, I think it is, just because the first one I know is hard to get under. Uh, with the seven, like I kind of have to just do it in the air. If I switch to the five, I can leverage the bottom a little bit uh, for a little bit more control, just on the front pin. Um, so what I'll do is I'll uh, counter rotate a bit, and then I'll lift on this front pin some until I feel it go up. And not necessarily that your that your one will go from front to back. This one probably won't either. But once I get enough of the gins up, then I'll go and I'll probably start. Uh, feeling doing like jiggle testing or, or whatever I need to do. Let me zoom out a little bit so this is in better focus. It doesn't camera doesn't seem to be, want to focus this close otherwise. Here, all right. So let's uh, we got pin one up higher than it started. So pin two, right here. We'll go ahead and counter rotate some. And then what I do is I kind of go front to back, uh, tickling the pins. A lot of people they do a bounce motion on the pin as well. But I find that the the tickling motion uh, allows me to set it with a uh, minimal amount of counter rotation. So there we go, two, uh, three. Half the half the trouble on this is finding the the pin you're trying to pick through all the warding. So I think this is three here. Counter rotating in there, and then. I think this is four here. Counter rotating. And I keep counter rotating each time I tickle, but there are marks on the plug there uh, that tell me not to go too far. So uh, let's do pin six. And I've kind of learned about the binding order in this, otherwise, you'll set one, um, go to set another, and you'll drop the one you previously set until eventually you learn which ones you have to kind of set first as you go through lock. So six, and then I'll tickle number five. And we might get to the point where I have to do some jiggle testing. Like, okay, so I, I've gone through all the pins and we're not open yet. So now what I'll do is I'll go through and um, I'll go on a pin. Pin one has a little bit of jiggle. Pin two. I think that has a little jiggle. Pin three, jiggle for sure. Pin four, all right, I think that's my fender right there. So pin four, and this might drop some further back. Let's go ahead and see if I can really get pin four this time. I think I'm on it. I think it's there, right there. Try bouncing a little. Tickling it some, bounce, tickle. I just don't want to counter rotate so far that I drop stuff. I think I dropped some stuff there. 
if I was jiggling, and that could just be because something else is binding now, or it could be because I have it set. All right, so five, I just tapped it a little, and uh, I think it's five. It seems like it's five. I tapped a little, and I, I dropped a little further in the false set, so I could have been ca caught on some of the slope part of the gin and gone down to the the deepest part of the valley on the gin. Maybe I'll explain that a bit when I when I gut it, um, so I can feel the. I felt a little bit more plug rotation when I did that. All right, so five. And we're open. So we'll go ahead and uh, gut this real quick. It's nicely, uh, I did bring this SS Dev. Uh, it can help with uh, the jiggle testing sometimes if the other ones I have a hard time finding the, pick, the, the pins. So we'll go ahead and, oh, I never used the key, did I? Here's the key. Oh, I have a hard time getting in. There we go. We'll go ahead and take a, a gut. It has his grub screwed, so it's nice and easy to gut. I didn't even bring down a follower, but you could uh, you could definitely do it with a follower. So let's turn on some autofocus here and go ahead and gut a little. So starting at the front, first grub screw, pin one, and let's see if we can, if we can get it. So there's the spring. Get in a little closer and see if we can catch this as it, oh, we didn't catch it as it came out. I like to, to catch it as it comes out to show uh, the installation direction of the gin. We'll try better with the, sec the next one. See if we can't get these to come out. I don't know why it's giving me a hard time now. It's usually not a problem. There's the first pin. All right, second pin. So this might take longer than doing it through the plug with a follower. Might go a bit faster. But there is that second one. Let's see, let's uh, see if we can get this to come out. Um, there we go. Now you can see the gin direction is pointing towards the key pin. That's the way you want all of them. Otherwise, uh, it's kind of pointless. The, the gin will just it'll be on the standard area probably. And they won't be able to go into the counter milling and give you that extra hard time, which is what you're looking for. All right, third one. Spring. I feel like the, the gutting is going to take longer than the, uh, the picking. Third one. Fourth one. Spring. Third one didn't come out the way I wanted to display. Oh, that one came out. Maybe catch it in the slow mo. The gin direction. I, want to I wanted to show every gin direction. It would be maybe easier with a plug. Spring. See if I can catch this one. There we go. There we go. We got that gin direction coming, coming out of that one. Bang on the counter, and the last one, and then we'll take the plug out to look at it, which involves um, getting the C clip off, which a lot of people don't like doing on the ASA. Or the locks with the def these deformable clips can be annoying. All right in the sixth one, there's the gin. We can see the direction of that pointing towards the key pin, and the last pin jumping onto the tray. Digs micro tray. All right, so that's all those. Let's go ahead and get this off. All you need is the C-clip plier, and you go and you spread them like that. Squeeze until it spreads out a bit. And then just to get it not all to form in one direction, uh, I'll turn it uh, like this a little bit, and I'll squeeze it again just to kind of even out the deformity so you're not stressing one part of the metal too much so you can Continue to use the clip over and over. And then a third direction. And then to put it back on, I'll just use a pair of pliers to squeeze it down. So that should be enough to get that off. And look at the plug. So there's the plug. If you're gutting it, you want to be a little careful. Uh, if you're gutting it through the plug, 
that you don't drop one of these gin spools into a uh, anti-drill hole. If that anti-drill pin's not in there, this can drop in there kind of deep and you brick it. You have to do a little percussive maintenance to get out of that. What that means is smack it down while you're pulling it out and you're trying to use um, the the moment, moment of the uh, momentum of the pin to keep it out of that hole. And here is the plug. You can see there's uh, one deep counter mill on each chamber. And if it had two light mills on each chamber, that would be a plug made for barrel spools, not gin spools. So when you when you look at your plug, you want to make sure it's paired up with the driver's pins that you have in your lock. But that is the ASA 600 with gins. And thanks again, uh, Georgia Jim, for sending this over, even though you know that this is not one of my favorite locks. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Bye.